Welcome back to the Tomarosa. We're still here. Where have you been? <laughs> so, where do we leave off? I think we went to Wisconsin and it was the end of February. So Met some awesome people and learned some awesome things and we just reveled in the awesomeness. And then we came back here. Then what did we do? Well, March was pretty much uh, winter still. I started working on some of the pipeline project stuff in March. That's still an ongoing thing. Uh, that'll be a separate video. And then from mid-March to mid-April, Stacy was working on a special project. And he will have, of course, another video about that. But while he was working on that special project, uh, we didn't get anything else done on the farm. And we obviously didn't do any videos because we were both really busy with projects. But it is our dry period and we actually have taken some downtime too for ourselves. Which has been nice. Just We've been able bit. to do a little traveling, visiting some people, uh, working on some other projects in the house that we never finished before. And so that's been nice. It's, it's, it's been very helpful. And then uh, end of March we started grazing uh, cows. We had uh, earliest we've ever been able to graze. Uh, we had a pretty good flush. And we started by grazing uh, what we call our secondary pastures, which are the ones basically farthest from the barn, the harder ones to get to, uh, because our primary pastures, we're really saving those because that's the ones we want to use when we're milking. We want the, the best grass for when they're milking, and we want it easy to get the cows to and from the barn when they're milking. Even though we did start grazing really early in March, April was cold here and the grass growth really slowed down but it's warmed up and it's picking up again but uh so i think it's going to be a good grass year that's what virginia says anyway well we're we're, we're farmers so we're always optimists <laughs> but stacy did look at soil moisture and last year before we had that big drought our soil moisture at this point was 17 percent which was about uh, two percent less than normal and this year we're at 22 percent which is about 3% more than normal. So, so I think that that's good. That is good. The other thing uh, some of you have asked about and we, we talked about as our goals of this year, we are still working on our community creamery. Another video will be coming about that. That's moving ahead and looking forward to sharing it. And what other things did we talk about that we haven't updated you on? How are the cows doing? Let's talk about the cows. So overall, the cows are doing uh, pretty good. I don't know if we talked about Buttercup. Did we talk about Buttercup? Yes, we talked about Buttercup. But one okay. thing we didn't talk about, because this happened when we weren't filming, uh, you know, we separate our calves around six months. That's when we wean them. But they're in a pen together. I mean, in the barn together, um, they come and go. But they have a pen, and they can see each other and touch noses. And it's always this question of when do you re reintroduce them and let them run as a herd again? So we were gonna start grazing and we didn't wanna have to manage two different groups to graze. Which so, is what we did last year and- uh, Into the summer, cause we weren't, we we're all new. Yeah. We, we don't know everything. And it's, a, it's twice the work. <laughs> so we reintroduced them, I think it was sometime at the end of March, early April when we were starting to graze. And we were watching them cause we we're like, are they gonna try to nurse or are they gonna, be okay and they were fine so that was at about uh they were about nine to ten months so they were separated for about three to three to four months and that worked for us we didn't use any of the the, th the plastic things that people put in noses we didn't have to do that and it worked for our system but you know we have a winter where they're going to spend a lot of time a couple months in the barn so that works for us here it may not work for somebody on another farm so they're all together now as one big happy family. Yes, and it does make uh, pasture moves a lot easier when you're only dealing with one herd versus two. So we're happy about that. And then I don't know what happens magically, but we took the, uh, the heifer collars off of our three calves from last year. Uh, let's see, so that's sunflower, dandelion, and arrow leaf. And they magically like grew overnight. <laughs> it was like, we're like, oh, they're still kind of small. And we took, our, we took the collars off. Next time we're looking in the field and we're like, is that dandelion or is that doty? You know, it just seems like they magically grew. So they're all almost a year now, year old now. So we'll be breeding them this summer and we could have as many as eight calves next year. But this year we're expecting four calves starting in mid-May to mid-June. 
The Chuila Farmer's Market starts up here soon in a couple of weeks. Uh, actually starts uh, Friday the 13th in uh, Chuila City Park, which we're excited about. It'll be before we're milking cows, uh, but we do have cheese that we've held over and aged over the winter, so we'll have some cheese to sell. And Virginia's making uh, milk soap, and so we'll at least have some products uh, at the first uh, Chuila Farmer's Market of the year, and we plan to be there every Friday through the end of the season. And I don't know if how farmer's markets are around the country, but wherever you're at, you probably have a farmer's market nearby. And, you know, during the summer, it's such a great place to go. You get really good local, you know, high-quality food. Uh, the prices are normally comparable to what you would pay at the grocery store, but, you know, you're giving it straight to the farmer. And so I, I support your local farmer's markets. They're great. They're good for your community. They're good for you. They're good for the farmer. Another thing that happened during the dark times when we weren't filming is we got a grant to help us put in a cheese cave. We currently have been using an upright freezer with an external thermostat to help control the temperature. And that's been working okay, but obviously that doesn't have a lot of space. So we wanted to expand more into cheese and learn more about how to age it. So how are we going to do that? We're going to get a very large concrete uh, preformed septic tank, right? No, water tank. So like I said, we're going to get a precast, preformed concrete water tank. And uh, that's going to be, it's about six feet? Yes, uh, to be able to stand in. And so we did find a, a water tank in Spokane that's uh, six feet on the inside. So, so we'll, we'll have a video about us putting that in and, and what we've discovered. So if you have any information about that, go ahead and send it to us, um, either through email or as a comment. That'd be great. So the girls, <laughs> it's a little warm today, have been hanging out in the barn like a bunch of bums. They grazed and they came, because they come and go, as you know. The barn is kind of like their home base and their shelter, uh, but uh, they have access to their paddock. And they came and they lay down and now Buttercup's not sure if there's grass out in the field, like if we gave them a new paddock and she's the herd boss. So she's letting us know that she hears us and she wants us to know that that she wants to know if there's any more grass. And little does she know, we did already move the fence for them. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> Let's go in and take a look at the cows. Hi, girls. See, everybody else is laying down. They're all happy. And who's up but Buttercup? But see, in the front there, that that one right there, that's Sunflower. Look how big she is. So the cows are all doing great and we're expecting good things this year from them. We love that they act as a herd, that they come and go, that they're raising their calves and teaching them how to graze and what to look out for. It's been working for us. Let's go look at the uh, horses and talk about them. Well, here we are with our yard care team hard at work. Casey's doing very well. She's excited about fresh grass, as is Jody. We're still doing some training with them, riding. But right now, they're helping us with lawn care. I'm also working on my garden. Obviously not that hard. Just starting to clear it out. Try to figure out what I want to plant. First off, let's talk about our, our, our wheelbarrow here. Oh, you can't see it. We gotta dig it out. Oh yeah. <laughs> you wear out your wheelbarrow, you know you're doing a lot of work. Well, we put two new tires on it last fall. Our chores never stop, though. Well, the, especially these chores. Oh, we didn't talk about our chickens. Our chickens have been doing good, too. Oh, yeah. They're giving us we have about 18 hens. We're getting about a dozen a day. They like to take us on an Easter egg hunt. They are free range. Let's see if I can go find some eggs right One of the now. places our chickens like to lay eggs. Oh look, there's a chicken there right now. Oh, a couple of eggs. I'll let her be. The cows decided to go on back out. 
You go all the way down the lane. Carnations up front there. All the way out. Their paddock is right there over to the left. what we have been up to. We've been catching up on some things, taking on new projects, and even taking just a little bit of time for ourselves. As farmers, we can take time for ourselves? Just a little bit. A little bit. So it's, it's nice to kind of have that time to get ready again for this next season. And it's coming up very rapidly. We hope that you've had a good couple of months during the winter to do some things or no matter where you are in the world. And we're glad that you are back with us to see what we're up to. We'll be posting some more videos of the little things we told you about that uh, we haven't fully shared with you. And then we'll keep posting videos of stuff that, you know, all of our farming stuff. And the only reason we haven't really shared them with you yet. <laughs> Okay, go. And the only reason we really haven't shared them with you yet is because they are so awesome <laughs> that they deserve their own videos. That is true. All right. Well, thanks for checking in with us. We missed you. We're glad to be back. And we'll see you next time on the Tom Rosa.